Cleveland Cavaliers, Toronto Raptors. We got to we got to talk about this about how Raptors didn't show up. I give you credit. Last episode, you stuck with your guns and said, "I'm I'm taking the uh, Toronto Raptors in oh, six. God. I said, I'm, "I jumped, I dropped it from Cavaliers in six to sweep." Yeah, you did. Lo and behold, it was a sweep and it was a s- substantial sweep. Cavaliers beat the uh, Raptors 128 to 93 in Game Four. Swept them full zip. LeBron had two. Tw- LeBron gonna get hit. You can't deny that. He didn't score 40 right. points, but he had 29 points, 11 assists, eight rebounds. Uh, Cavaliers uh, has beaten the Raptors in three straight playoff appearances with the last two ending in a full game sweep. So you have not beat them two years in the playoffs and you eight, you was 0 and 8. <sighs> Valen Tunis was the only one that showed up to play the last game with 18 points, five rebounds, two assists, and, and three blocks. I guess DeMar DeRozan was so frustrated he went on here and got himself ejected from the game. But I have to say that was a that it deserved a flagrant one. It didn't deserve a flagrant two, an ejection. But you just go ahead and let him go to the showers quickly, you know what I'm saying, before anything started. I the Raptors mentally not ready. They scared, I ain't gonna say they scared. I ain't say they're scared of LeBron. Yeah, they scared of LeBron. I see it. Right. I see it. <laughs> because you can't sit here and tell me you finished the season with the 59 to 23 record, third best in the NBA behind the Houston Rockets and the Golden State Warriors. You had you the Cavaliers went seven games in the first round against the Indiana Pacers with a Victor Oladipo. Mm-hmm. And Lance Stevenson, your turn to finally slay the dragon, and you kind of just lay down and died in front of LeBron. Man, they they gave it up. I, I, I it's hard for me to 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 figure this out. And a tired, a tired uh, LeBron James, who just like I said, just went through seven games with the Indiana Pacers. He told you he was tired. You couldn't take advantage of that. You let him do what he want. You didn't just let him do what he want. You let the rest of the players, like Kevin Love, J.R. Smith, Kyle Corby, George Hill, they went. They won. They put up sixty six points as a as a group and shot seventy one percent. You wasn't playing any defense. Seventy one percent field goal. Nobody. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah so, they didn't play defense on nobody. Right. So you know, it's just, it's just in the off season. They have to make some moves. Now, let me ask you this, because me and I think it was Uncle Hate from AA Sports, we was going back and forth on on, on his Instagram, uh, mm-hmm. that now, you know, I'm season, and I hear, I do hear it in the, uh, in the media that Toronto's trying to figure out if they should keep Dwayne Casey, the head coach of the Toronto Raptors. Now, do you want me to go? T- no, nah, I'm going to go first. I'm going to tell you how I feel about that situation. I do understand, <clears throat> usually, when you got so many high-priced players on your team, the, ne- the next person to go is the head coach, right? Okay. So now we have, okay, so your highest-paid players, your core group of the team, Jonas Valachunas, four years, $64 million, $64 million contract he signed last year. Serge Ibaka, three years, $65 million contract. Kyle Lowry, three year, $100 million contract. DeMar DeRozan, five year, $39 million contract they signed last, they signed this year, I'm sorry. Jonas signed his contract last year. These three, Ibaka, Lowry, and DeRozan signed their contract this year. That's a $64 million, $65 million, $100 million, $39 million. Nobody gonna take, take them contracts, especially, especially Lowry's and, and DeRozan's. They met, that's max deals right there that they have right there. So you can't get rid of that. And yes, next thing, next thing to go is the head coach. But this is the head coach that just won coach of the year uh, with, the, with the coaches. Um, and just was the head coach in, the, in this year's All-Star game. So you got all these accomplishments. And let me, let me run through this real quick. Since he's been, uh, 
He'd been coaching that with the Raptors since 2011, seven years. They start off 23 and 43, following year 34, 48, following year 48, 34, fourth year 49, 33, six years 56 and 26, a little drop in year six, 51 and 31, and this year 59, 23, best record in franchise history. You really want to get rid of the, get rid of the head coach with, with a with a resume like that? Hmm. What you think? Was in that question to me? Yeah, I'm sending that question. Uh-huh. Did you get rid of Dwayne? Did you get rid of Dwayne Casey? Yeah. He what? Gotta, yeah, he gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. You've been hey, you've been guiding this ship <laughs> for the last two years. <laughs> you've been the captain <laughs> of this ship for this eight this zero and eight journey throughout this this whole thing. You know, like I said, hey, it's just. And yeah, don't get me wrong. It's some players over there stealing. Serge Ibaka, he's stealing. You know, it's just to call out a, a, a couple of them. They they stealing over there. But like you said, you can't get rid of them contracts. Can't get rid of the coach. You know, um, will it make a difference? Probably not. You know, and he is a good coach. He's a good coach. But he's. It doesn't seem like he he can get them mentally to the next level. You know, they got all the talent. All the pieces are there. But something he's not saying or something they're not hearing from him to get them to the next level. So, you know, sometimes, you know, we we experience, you know, we listen to sports a long time or whatever, Mm -hmm. and, you know, we've had championship teams here in Chicago where, you know, coaches have been fired and boom, somebody else get hired. Hey, you're in the Super Bowl now. Or you in the NBA championship now, or or World Series? You know the players. You know you tweak them, but sometimes they their ears grow deaf to what's coming out of the, the the top guys' you know mouth or whatever, and they need to hear you know hear from somebody else, hear the different way or whatever. And that seems that seems to be the problem with Toronto. I'm not saying that the coach now he's not a good coach. We all know that he is. This just may not be that team for him, mm-hmm. you know? and they they seem like they stopped listening. You know, they stopped listening to him. You got the Rose. You said he he's on the bench in the fourth quarter. He's your best player. He has to get back in this game. I I, I know I get it. Where the offense they flowing now without him. You know, this is going going back to that last game. They mm-hmm. start moving. They flowing without him. But so at some point in time, this guy has to re-enter the game. Mm-hmm. You know, he has to re-enter the game. I and mean, we, we, we've been fortunate enough where we've been here in Chicago, whatever. We, we've seen championship games where the Bulls bench the came back, you know, in, in games or whatever, while Jordan and Pippen on the bench. At some point in that game, he, he, he comes back in that game and, and brings it home. Why wasn't DeRosa able to do that? Why wasn't he allowed to do that? <laughs> you know, so you got you to gotta look at certain things. I think, yeah, don't. The onus, it lies on the players, too. Don't get me wrong. But you can't fire 12 people. <laughs> you made a great point, bro. I'm putting put it to you like that. But I don't think this is on the coach. I don't think you fired this coach. I got a couple of reasons. Number one, I hear mm-hmm. you. I think it might have been a mistake to put to have DeRozan sit in fourth quarter. While the, you know, the team. But wait, man, let's think about this. Okay. Let's not forget, he's an introvert, and he just got through stating to the world in the Players' Tribune that he suffers with the, for the with depression. So I think this is what Dwayne Casey, this is just my opinion. Everybody out there, if y'all want to hit me up, at me, at Get With The Sports on Twitter. My opinion is that Dwayne Casey is looking, at for, looking for the best interest of DeMar DeRozan more so than the team for the simple fact. He might have been like, you know what? I'm gonna sit you down. I'm gonna run this play. I can tell you don't have it now. It might, I know in the back of my mind what you what you suffering from. When you're ready, you won't get up and come and tell me you're ready. He never got up and t- told him ready. You never know what was said mm-hmm. on the bench. He could have said, you know what? When you're ready to get back in, get your head straight, come get me. And he probably mm-hmm. never came down. That's just this is my opinion. Okay. The man suffering from the pressure, and you want something as big as this playoff, t- this playoffs. 
to affect him in the long term with the rest of his career. That's what I'm thinking with Dwayne Case. Dwayne Case is a hell of a coach. Yeah. And I think he's looking he's looking at his team as an indiv- at each individual as what they could bring to the team. What I think they missing <clears throat> is a goon. You know what I'm saying? Like they had beat PJ Tucker last year. Somebody to, they need somebody to confront LeBron James and just don't give a damn who he is, what he is. I'm a stick. Like a Lance Stevenson. And Lance Stevenson, yeah. I love me some Lance Stevenson. He don't care who LeBron is. I got you. Give me him. I can take care of this. Or David West. David West. This is what they need to look into next year on that roster. Bring in the David West, bring in Lance Stephen, the veteran who who's looking for the uh what's it called? Veterans minimum. Yeah. <clears throat> and just stick with LeBron. That your job is a LeBron buster. Stick on LeBron. Don't make sure he don't get nothing. And let's not forget, back in the day, this is the same thing that Jordan used to do with, you know, when he was in, in that era back in the day. That's what LeBron's going through now. LeBron's too good. Uh, he just like Jordan back in the day, like when Jordan didn't allow Barkley, uh, Charles Barkley, he didn't allow Patrick Ewan, Carl Malone, nor uh, John Stockton to get a ring. Just imagine if Jordan wasn't there, Jazz would won back-to-back championships. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a LeBron factor, just like it was a Jordan factor back in the day. So I can't even put it on the coach. Yes, the coach is going to make mistakes, granted. But once again, third best record in the, in, the, in, the, in the NBA last year. Each year, except for that one year, the one year dip, you, jump, you dip from 56 wins to 51 wins. Then you go next year, this year, with the best wins out, with the best wins in franchise history. How you give that up? You know what I mean? It like this, bro. We know good and well how this going to end up if they do it this way. For some fact, let's take it to the NFL. When our Chicago Bears got rid of Lovey Smith with a tennis assist record because he couldn't beat who? Green Bay. Okay. You okay. got rid of Lovey Smith because you couldn't beat Green Bay. Now, you can't beat anybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just is it, that's just that simple. Why you're not gonna take a step backwards? You're gonna take a couple step backwards. That's just me, because uh-huh. I'm not saying there's no co- there's not there's no coaches out there that could replace them, but you might not get the same results that you get right here. Look at just look at Oklahoma City. Uh, yeah. They got rid of Scott Brooks, brought in uh, Bill Don uh, Bill Donovan. The, yeah, uh, Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan, you're right. He ain't do no better. Shoot, I think his his job is on the line right now. You had Paul George, Carmelo Anthony, Russell Westbrook, and you still don't know how to, how to mesh them together. But then on the other side, you got <coughs> Quinn Snyder, Utah, making sugar sugar out of ish. You got uh, Brad Stevens, who we gonna I'm gonna talk about that right now. How in the hell he doesn't get one vote? Right. Yeah, for what he's done with the boss itself. The boss itself, still, they won the last four teams left standing. But he don't get one vote for coach of the year. He's one, I think, if he's not the best coach, he's the top three best. No, he's top two best coach. He's definitely up there. So you're not going to find a coach like, I'm. okay, I take that back. Maybe I'll bring in a Mark Jackson. If I get rid of Casey, I'll bring in a Mark Jackson. You know what I'm saying? You gotta bring in somebody with some fire that's gonna, gonna, you know, circle the wagons when it comes mm-hmm. to. Definitely, definitely. So there's coaches out there. I just think they need to give Dwayne Casey one more year. Look what Dwayne. Nobody wants to play for Toronto for simple fact he, they in another country. So you paying two taxes. That's the reason why free agents don't want to go out to Toronto. You gotta overpay the. You gotta overpay a player to go out to Toronto to compensate for the two for the double tax. And look what he's done with this team. You know what I'm saying? So I got I would have to give Dwayne Casey one more year. 